Our lead story tonight in a shocking incident, a woman from the scheduled caste community in Bihar was not only beaten up just a few kilometers away from Patna, but also allegedly stripped naked and urinated on. And this just because her husband had borrowed 1,500 rupees from a local goon. Now, the Bihar police are yet to arrest the two main accused in this particular case, but they shockingly claim that all the allegations leveled by the victim are not true. They say that uh, the charge that she was urinated on is false. This is the two accused are still on the run. 48 hours after being beaten, stripped naked and humiliated by a village strongman and his accomplices over a loan of just 1500 rupees, 30 kilometers outside Bihar's capital Patna, this woman from a scheduled caste part of the state's Mahadalit community is recovering at a rural hospital. In her complaint to the police, the woman has said her husband had refused to pay additional interest on the 1500 rupee loan taken from the village strongman. The woman has said that on Saturday night, accused Pramod Singh, his son and their aides first brutally assaulted her, then stripped her naked and even urinated on her face. Forty-eight hours after the incident, the local police have not managed to arrest the two main accused, the strongman and his son. But they have been quick to claim that while the woman was indeed assaulted, the other allegations of stripping and urination are untrue. ये सब बातें जांच में बिल्कुल असत्यापित और झूठी साबित हुई हैं। मामला एक पैसे वाला ही है और उसमें मारपीट की गई है और हॉस्पिटल में जाके भी धमकी देने की बात प्रकाश में आई है। ये साथ कोई घटना दुर्घटना होती है, पूरा का पूरा पुलिस और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन ध्यान देता है और कोई but in this case, the Bihar police appear to be making sweeping statements even before the accused have been arrested. With Manish Kumar and Habib Ali, Bureau Report, NDTV. So well after the CV incident, a horrific case of caste brutality this time from Bihar. But moving now to the other big headline, the Supreme Court's strong remarks in the Muzaffar Nagar school case. Well, a few weeks back, a seven-year-old Muslim student was slapped repeatedly by his classmates on the direction of their teacher. And the heart-wrenching incident was captured on camera. And the Supreme Court has made an important statement today saying that if true, this should shock the conscience of the nation. Arvind Gunasekar is uh, with us in studio. Arvind, so importantly, the Supreme Court has also, in a, sen in a sense, pulled up the UP government for the probe and said that a senior IPS officer should oversee the investigation now. Yeah, uh, Vedan, today Supreme Court castigated the UP government for its uh, shoddy investigation in the case of Muzaffar Nahar uh, child slap case. Uh, though a FAR has been registered under the Juvenile Justice Act, but Supreme Court, after going through the FAR, did uh, observe that uh, the allegations that have been leveled by the father of the victim have not been included in the affair and that's why Supreme Court came down strongly on the uh, UP government and that's why Supreme Court also ordered uh, deputing a senior IPS officer of the state to supervise the investigation and Supreme Court also asked the IPS officer to submit a status report in connection with the investigation. So this is per se on the investigation front. Also on the uh, emotional front or also uh, uh, subject that deals with the victim itself. Today, Supreme Court has also asked a uh, state of UP to take responsibility for the education of the uh, uh, of the child, and Supreme Court also asked uh, the UP state government to ensure that professional counselling is being uh, is done uh, for not just the victim but also other students involved in this particular uh, crime. And that's why Supreme Court also noted uh, that the uh, provisions of the Right to Education Act has been violated uh, in this particular case, and that's why Supreme Court also uh, made some. Scandals I think uh, remarks in this particular case wherein Supreme Court said mm -hmm. that if the allegations are true then it should uh, it should shock the shock the uh, conscience of the state and Supreme Court also went on to say that a quality education cannot be given if a person if a student is penalized in the name of religion and that's why Supreme Court has asked a uh, state of UP to file a detailed compliance report with all the directions that have been given by the Supreme Court on the next date of hearing so Supreme Court will again hear this matter on October 30th. Absolutely, Arvind. And the Supreme Court also said that it's a matter of right to life. Extremely uh, strong observations there by the Supreme Court. This gut-wrenching video had sparked massive outrage. Thanks, Arvind, for joining us with those details.
Moving now to the fallout of the huge diplomatic row between Canada and India. Well, security agencies are tightening the noose on Khalistani fugitives. This is the Delhi police have now found that the Canada-based Khalistani terrorist Ashdeep Dalla has links with Pakistan-based uh, terror outfit Lashkar-e Taiba, and uh, he is also wanted to target Hindu leaders in Punjab. In fact, the Khalistani terrorists plan to target leaders of Hindu outfits and BJP's ideological arm RSS had emerged during a crackdown by the Delhi police against two terror suspects earlier this year. In fact, in January, the police also conducted a raid in Delhi's Jahangirpuri and arrested Jagjit Singh Jaggayan and Norshad following an arms recovery. And in fact, now it's come to light that Ashdeep Dalla's links with Pakistan are more and more clear. And in a related development, in fact, what's also come to light is the fact that uh, you know the dossier on Gurpatwan Singh Pannu. Uh, details have emerged from the dossier, and uh, this dossier was maintained by the security agencies. And the details reveal that many cases have been registered against Pannu, including under the stringent anti-terror law UAPA. In fact, larger questions now on how has Canada actually become a safe haven for Khalistani extremists. Uh, Nita Sharma is now with us uh, live on the broadcast. Nita, so as I said, the larger question, of course, is that this is an ongoing process as far as, you know, the, this NIA crackdown is concerned, or the security agency crackdown is concerned. But the fact that, you know, these details show that Canada indeed has become, in a sense, a safe haven for these fugitives and those who New Delhi identifies very clearly as, you know, extremists and terrorists. Absolutely. You know, the Khalistani terror cells thrive in Canada. At least that's what the security agencies investigation show. They are making doziers, you know, at least 21 gangs. They say uh, people linked to 21 gangs are wanted by various intelligence agencies as far as India is concerned. You know, the latest dozier also shows links of, uh, you know, uh, I ISYF, that is the Indi International Sikh Youth Federation and also Khalistani Lib Liberation Force. So these these are uh, organizations, uh, people are connected to these organizations. NIA has also come out. NIA has also said that they want, they have uh, declared reward money also. So a whole lot of exercises going on as far as Canada is concerned. Uh, various uh, agencies are working together. In fact, today also there was a uh, meeting, a high level meeting uh, among agencies in which representatives of RANW, IB, even the local police was present. They are trying to share up uh, investi investigations and, you know, prop up more data so that the dossier becomes more wholesome because Canada obviously has been denying it since last one decade. As far as Pannu is concerned, uh, Pannu has been wanted by Indian intelligence agencies for last uh, so many years, but they have been denying it. So that is why this all uh, 360 degree effort is going on between agency to consolidate all their data. Right, Tita, thanks so much for joining us with all those details. And this, this, of course, in the backdrop of the huge diplomatic row between Canada and India. But moving now to the big political headline. Well, the Prime Minister has sounded the election bugle in Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. An MP, in fact, the Prime Minister today tore into the opposition alliance at a mega BJP event ahead of the state elections later this year. He said that the Congress is being run by urban Naxals. Meanwhile, in neighbouring Chhattisgarh, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi repeated his caste sin system. Um, take a look at this report. अब कांग्रेस एक ऐसी कंपनी बन गई है नारों से लेकर नीतियों तक हर चीज आउटसोर्स कर रही है और ये ठेका किसके पास है जानते हैं कांग्रेस का ठेका अब कुछ अर्बन नक्सलियों के पास है कांग्रेस में अब अर्बन नक्सलियों की ही चल रही है हम सब जोरदार तालियों के साथ ऑन हिज हाफ डे विजिट टू मध्य प्रदेश प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी चीफ मिनिस्टर शिवराज सिंह चौहान स्टेट बीजेपी प्रेसिडेंट बी डी शर्मा रीचिंग भोपाल जम्बूरी ग्राउंड वेविंग एट द क्राउड नारी शक्ति वंदन अधिनियम के द्वारा माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी ने अवसर दिया है पार्टी वर्कर्स गायलेंड एट द पी एम एंड थैंक हिम फॉर द पैसेज ऑफ द महिला शक्ति वंदन बिल द पी एम दो टोर इन टू द ऑपोजिशन वंदन कर रही है कांग्रेस और उसके नए नए गमंडिया गठबंधन ने मजबूरी में 
इस बिल का समर्थन बहुत खट्टे मन से किया है इसलिए मौका मिलते ही मेरी माता बहने मेरे शब्द याद रखना मौका मिलते ही एक गमंडिया गठबंधन के लोग माताओं बहनों को धोखा देने का तय करके बैठे हैं तैयार बैठे हैं ओबीसी वर्ग की बात करते हैं सिक्स हंड्रेड किलोमीटर से वे कांग्रेस लीडर राहुल गांधी अटैक द सेंटर वाई लॉन्चिंग द आवास न्याय योजना इन छत्तीसगढ़ भाई और बहनों का सेंसस हिंदुस्तान का एक्सरे है इससे पूरे देश को पता लग जाएगा कि ओबीसी कितने हैं दलित कितने हैं आदिवासी कितने हैं महिलाएं कितने हैं जनरल कास्ट के लोग कितने हैं और एक बार यह डेटा हिंदुस्तान की जनता के हाथ में होगा तो फिर देश सब लोगों को लेकर सब लोगों को भागीदारी देकर आगे चल पाएगा इन द लास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी विजिटेड मध्य प्रदेश फॉर सेवन टाइम्स वेल दिस वाज राहुल गांधी सेकेंड विजिट टू छत्तीसगढ़ इन लेस देन अ मंथ clearly indicating the sounding of pole bigel in the big pole battle in bhopal with camera person rizwan khan anand pratanshi and ragdwari for ndi tv so well the countdown to elections has well and truly begun in election bound rajasthan meanwhile the prime minister lashed out at chief minister ashok gehlot saying that the people of rajasthan have made up their minds to vote the congress out of power he said that the congress should get zero marks for development in the past year take a look at what he had to say राजस्थान के लोगों ने कांग्रेस के कुशासन से मुक्ति पाने का बिगुल फूंक दिया है पिछले पांच साल जिस तरह की सरकार कांग्रेस ने यहां पर चलाई है वो जीरो नंबर पाने की हकदार है गहलोत सरकार ने राजस्थान के लोगों के यहां के युवाओं के पांच महत्वपूर्ण वर्ष बर्बाद कर दिए और इसलिए राजस्थान के लोगों ने ठान लिया है गहलोत सरकार को हटाएंगे बीजेपी को वापस लाएंगे so well the prime minister there in campaign mode quite a packed day is here in the national capital the prime minister paid his tribute to deen dayal upadhyay a towering leader of the bjp one of the four runners of the bjp in fact on his 107th anniversary he also unveiled the tallest statue of deen dayal upadhyay there the prime minister unveiling the 72 feet statue of deen dayal upadhyay hamari bhaicharik jeet bhi hai Meanwhile the big political headline from down south well a bit of a setback for the BJP as the AIADMK formally announced the breakup of its alliance with the BJP in Tamil Nadu and at the center of the controversy is the Tamil Nadu BJP chief Annamalai who offended the AIADMK with his contentious remarks against uh, AIADMK patriarch and MGR's mentor late Anandurai well the alliance has broke after many flashpoints including EPS's snub to Annamalai who has been on a state wide uh, padyatra there in Tamil Nadu. In fact, Sam Daniel is now with us on the broadcast. Uh, so Sam, you know, this has been something that's been brewing for quite some time now, but a bit of a, you know, setback for the BJP given the fact that Anamalai is on the statewide padyatra, but what are going to be the immediate political ramifications of the breakup of this alliance? Vedant for the BJP it's certainly a big loss because they don't have much of a presence in Tamil Nadu and without going piggy back on any of these two Dravidian parties they don't have much of a chance to win seats in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections although the BJP claims that under Anamalai's leadership their party's footprint has expanded in the state and at a time when the India alliance is gaining momentum with 28 plus parties in its fold 
this is being seen as a major setback for the NDA at the national level, particularly losing a key ally down south. For the AIADMK, this is being seen as an opportunity to reclaim its lost political fortunes because all the three elections, the AIADMK fought in alliance with the BJP. They got, they suffered huge defeats, be it the Lok Sabha elections or the Assembly elections and the more recent Assembly by poll. And this will be the first election after EPS became the singular leader of the AIADMK after expelling his rival OPS. And he's under pressure to prove that under his leadership, things are improving for his party. And the party hopes they'll be able to make a dent, will, will be able to win more seats in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. For the BJP, it's certainly a big loss, but the leaders here are yet to respond. The BJP state chief, Anamalai, who's being seen as responsible for this development, has said that his party's leadership alone in Delhi would be able to respond for these developments. Sam, thanks so much for joining us with all those details. This also after the BJP lost its only South Bastion, Karnataka. Thanks, Sam, for all those details. Moving now to our big focus, and that's Manipur. It's still uh, trying to get back to normalcy five months after the ethnic violence started. And amid this, the state government is focusing on its anti-narcotics task force. Well, the panel has been reconstituted to start its drive against illegal poppy cultivation. Ratandeep Chaudhary has this report. <laughs> A fresh anti-narcotics push from the Biren Singh government in Manipur. Months after poppy cultivation in the hill areas of the state bordering Myanmar became one of the flashpoints that triggered ethnic unrest. Killing over 170 people since May and displacing thousands. The Manipur government has now reconstituted its anti-narcotics task force, adding not only top police officers but also experts from agriculture, forensic and cybercrime. CM Biren says it is a continuation of his government's war on drugs. And we have constituted a joint committee with the state, uh, you know, NAV, NAV and the NC, NCB, and we will continue surveillance as well as destruction of the poppy plantation in the hill areas. The Manipur government says illegal poppy cultivation has been destroyed from a total of 18,664 acres of land in six years of Biren Singh government. The state government has now gone a step ahead urging the center to immediately prioritize border fencing work with Myanmar. Only 10% of Manipur's 400 km long border with Myanmar has been fenced. But the tribal groups say they have been unfairly blamed for the drug trade in Manipur and that the same communities have been living on both sides of the border even before India's independence. The indigenous tribal leaders forum ITLF appreciate the formation, the constitution of anti-narcotic task force. On the other side, there are many apprehensions that we had. Manipur will be hoping the government's new steps do not turn into yet another flashpoint in the strife-torn state. With BM Sanju and K Mangta in Manipur, in Guwahati, Ratandeep Chaudhary, NDTV.